Hello everybody, in this video I will show you how you can rotate and that process a magnet on a flat copper coil. So what you see here is the magnet that is already rotating and processing and underneath this acrylic disc that I have here, I can even lift it off a bit and it still works. This is just to get a flat surface, so I laid it on top of this flat coil and this flat coil is made with 18 gauge or 1 mm enameled copper wire. So this is the basic principle of it. It is connected to a small audio amplifier that is fed an AC sine wave signal from my smartphone, which is connected via Bluetooth. So right now I'm using a frequency of 22 Hz. A normal sine wave signal yeah simple as that and by changing the frequency you can also of course change the rotational speed of this magnet so just take it off here it's just four of these cube magnets stacked together and if I now lay it back on there you will see it doesn't want to rotate by itself because the initial frequency is just way too high for it to start rotating. So I have to decrease the frequency to around 10 Hz. And when I do this, I'm at the range where it is easier to start the rotation. So I just have to give it a initial slight pulse, which is kind of tricky sometimes, as you can see. <laughs> so now I've got it going and it will start to rotate after an initial push, push. Sometimes it starts by itself. Depends on how many magnets you use and yeah, of course the shape of the magnets and frequency. So now I'm at 10 Hz and gradually increasing the frequency again. So now I'm at 20 Hz, 25, 30, 40, 30, and so on. Now I'm at 40 Hz and as you can see the procession got quite violent and it's drawing kind of a star pattern. That is because yeah, it is attracted to the center and then also repelled by the outside. And this is what happens when you have it moving in a circular pattern and it just wobbles back and forth. In it. And you can adjust the movement a lot by the power you are applying with your audio amplifier and also with the frequency. So it's a bit of a dance between finding the right frequency and power input level to get the fastest rotation speeds. The fastest I could get is 150 Hz, which you have to multiply by 60 to get the rotations per minute. So right now at 40 Hz this is rotating at 2400 RPM, which is already kind of fast. And if I try to increase the frequency even more, it can get more stable or also more unstable and it will eventually shoot off the plate. So this is right now 60 Hz that you're seeing. So 3600 RPM started to become a bit slower in its processional movement but it is also very likely to shoot off any moment right now because now I'm increasing the frequency even more so right now I'm at 80 Hz so almost 5000 RPM so let's try to get it even faster now I'm at 100 Hz as you can see inputs 100 Hz so this is rotating at 6000 RPMs and what I'm going to do now is show you the magnetic field of this rotating magnet underneath the field viewer and of course it is moving and now I touched it so it stopped moving so I have to try it again starting at around 10 Hz get the initial spin and then I will gradually increase the frequency to get a 
yeah, a high rotational frequency and also a quite stable precession. Like this at 67 Hz. Start to process again. As you can see, it is not easy to show this under the magnetic viewing film, but I will try anyways with just three of these magnets because they are slightly more stable in their rotation and I can view this to you better. And with just three of these magnets it should also be a bit easier to get them to rotate if I get the frequency right. So like this, I just need a slight push and then I will increase the frequency again. Oh, this was too fast. This didn't work. Push it again. And now I will show you the frequency as I increase it. And also what happens to the magnet when it's rotating and processing. So Right now, I will increase it even more to around, yeah, let's go faster, to 70 Hz. And let's try to view this with the magnetic viewing film. Hopefully I can get it correct this time. And as you can see, the field shape of it in the center of this right ring and also on the outside you get this white ring, as you could probably see before I started touching it. And now I will also show you something interesting. You don't even need um, just magnets like this. What you can also do is take some steel spheres. These are just copper coated steel spheres and put them between the magnets and this will of course also work and they will start to rotate and process just like the magnets like this and I will start to increase the frequency again now I'm at around 30 Hertz as you can see so I will show you this under the viewing film again. As you can see we get a quite similar field geometry. I know this is a bit hard to show on camera because it is processing that fast. So this is what the field looks like when it's not rotating. And yeah, you just saw what it looks like when it's rotating. So these are just some interesting tricks you can do. I can also take a stack of five of these magnets, which is kind of the limit for this size of the coil. And I will try to get this to rotate, but I can tell you, oh, now it was easy, but normally it is kind of hard to get this large stack to rotate. And let's see what um, speeds or frequencies we can achieve with this one. So right now I'm at 50 Hz and as it's spinning so stable I will just try to view it again under the viewing film. Hopefully you can see this quite well or could see this quite well. And now I will just decrease the frequency again and try to get it to rotate. Yeah, I have to really get the frequency correct for it to start to rotate, which is a bit tricky. So as you can see, sometimes it just doesn't want to start to rotate. But now it is, thankfully. So what I'm showing you now is I will just um, decrease the frequency now. Right now I'm at 9 Hz. 
I'm going lower to 8 hertz. And as you can see, the rotation becomes much slower. Now I'm in 7 hertz. I just gradually decrease the frequency to around. Now I'm at 5 hertz. And as you can see, it's making 5 rotations per second, which is kind of slow, but it still works. And this should show you the basic principle of how this works, because the alternating field is, of course, causing uh, yeah, the poles to flip all the time, five times per second. And of course, um, this causes the magnet to flip five times a second. And to this, uh, to, due to the mass of the magnets, when it's already spinning, it will just continue to spin with the pole flipping. And the precession comes, I think, from the precession of the magnetic field itself. So it is forced to go in a circular mo movement, even if, this, if I use these low frequencies. Let me check if I can get it even slower. Now I'm at yeah, 3.8 Hz, which is kind of low. And as you can see, it now stopped. So let's increase the frequency again a bit. Oops, that was too much. Let's try at around 8 Hz and see if I can get it to spin again. Just like this. And then I increase the frequency again. And as you can see at 15 Hz it spins quite well. And another thing that I will show you is the power input is quite relevant. So now I'm at 20 Hz and using quite a lot of power. So I'm decreasing it a bit. As you can see the decrease had a big influence on how fast or in what patterns the rotating magnet is processing. So I'm decreasing it even more. As you can see, now it is at a much slower precession rate. Even if I increase the frequency more. So now I can 40 Hz. And you can hear the magnet. Now it has an interesting pattern at 40 Hz. And I will increase it even more. To 50 Hz. And now it's yeah going crazy wild. Maybe we can get a quite good view under the viewing film. Hopefully you can see quite well what the field looks like when it's rotating and when it's not rotating. Just the difference of how the field shapes when the magnets are rotating or not. And some people will of course say this is just because of the, yeah, of the lag of the film itself. So that the film has some lag to it when you rotate it. I mean that's of course kind of true. It has some kind of lag, but I don't think that lag is too big that it would really influence what you're seeing. Because what you're seeing when it is rotating and processing is yeah, just a field that is present right there at the moment, if it's rotating or not. The same goes for any AC generator. The field, of course, changes when the generator is rotating compared to when it is not rotating and yeah I think the same is happening with just some regular magnets when you just rotate them like this I will for the last time try to get a good image of that so I'm trying to get a high enough rotational frequency and still make it process really slowly so we can see it even better. So this is 52 Hz. 
hand. If I came close to it, you should see it really well. This white ring that is created on the outside and also the white ring is, that is created on the inside. And this white ring on the outside isn't present before um, yeah, when the magnets are just still. I hope you can see this on camera quite well. So now I dropped it and again I will show you. This is what the magnet looks like under the field viewer when it's not rotating. So we don't have an outer white line which we have when it is rotating. That is what I think is happening as the field changes when the magnet itself is rotating, obviously. So yeah, that's enough for this video today. So hope you enjoyed it. Or if you have questions, you feel free to ask. And have a nice day and goodbye.